This is a Queen Mary's College video on the uh, heart and the associated blood vessel. You've probably seen this diagram before, just showing the um, heart itself and the lungs there. So the first key point to be made is that blood travels away from the heart in the arteries, always in arteries, and returns to the heart in Associated with the uh, lungs are the pulmonary blood vessels, so blood travelling to the lungs happens in the pulmonary artery and back to the heart in the pulmonary vein. Looking at the right and left side of the heart, right side deals with deoxygenated blood, so the blood has dropped off oxygen to all the cells of the body, comes back to the heart to be pumped to the lungs and become oxygenated. The left side of the heart deals with the oxygenated blood and the heart pumps this to all the cells of the, of the body. Detail about the arteries. You can see the artery wall contains considerable mus muscle and elastic fibers. So the key points there that arteries carry blood away from the heart. The inner space, otherwise known as the lumen, is small. Blood travels under high pressure. Highly elastic tissue allowing the stretching of the arterial walls. Strong enough to prevent any bursting of the artery under pressure. No valves, high blood pressure, fast flow of blood, so no chance of it flowing in the wrong direction. Oxygenated blood other than the pulmonary artery. And a detail here, you get the smaller arteries, known as arter arterioles. In contrast, the vein, far less elastic and far less muscular. Blood comes back to the heart in the veins. So thin wall, less elastic, so low pressure blood flow. But we do have valves in veins to make sure blood doesn't flow in the wrong direction. Here's a slide showing an artery and a vein. I'm sure you can see which is which. Indicated by the uh, thick elastic muscular wall of the artery there. And much thinner walls of the vein. We have mentioned capillaries. These are blood vessels as well, of course. The job that they do is allowing the exchange of materials for instance, oxygen moving from the blood to the cells for respiration. So, so, so thin to allow the diffusion of molecules. So making the point there that the large arteries become smaller and smaller. Arterioles branch into capillaries. And then the other end, the capillaries become larger venules and branch back to veins. Too much information in this slide, but just making the point that the heart's pumping blood to the whole body. So blood, oxygenated blood travels in the arteries via capillaries and then back to the veins and to the heart again.
all the labels here we need to remember. The key point is that the two sides of the heart, the right and left, don't mix. What well, it talks about the right and left sides, it is your right and your left that's referred to here. So the two sides are separate pumps and the blood is not supposed to mix at all unless there's some disorder. So let's take a look at the direction of blood flow. The blood comes in from the body cells through the vena cava, fills up the right atrium with deoxygenated blood. The AV valve or the tricuspid valve opens and blood flows into the much larger ventricle not shown particularly large on this diagram but it is large. The AV valve shuts and the heart contracts pushing the blood under high pressure through to the lungs by the pulmonary artery and the semilunar valve opens. Take note of the key points there. So once oxygenated, the blood returns to the heart, the pulmonary vein. And now oxygenated, it fills the left atrium. Again, the AV valve opens and blood fills up the left ventricle. And then the heart contracts and blood is pushed through the aorta under very high pressure and those semilunar valves open for that to happen. oxygenated blood is delivered to every cell of the whole body. This information is in your knowledge pack. Direction of blood flow we've mentioned. So the blood comes in to the vena cava, deoxygenated blood, you see blue in colour, fills the right atrium, the AV valve opens and it fills the right ventricle. Then contraction of the heart forces blood into the pulmonary artery and the semilunar valve opens. The blood becomes oxygenated in the lungs and travels back to the heart in the pulmonary vein, fills the left atrium, the AV valve opens and blood fills the left ventricle. Contraction of the heart forces blood into the aorta and the semilunar valve opens. Two sides of the heart, different in size there, much more muscular left ventricle. extra muscles there to push oxygenated blood to the whole body so more muscular for that reason. So contraction and relaxation of the heart is the, um, the purpose of the heart. Systole is the biological term for contraction and diastole is the uh, term for relaxation of the heart. Let's take a look at the uh, relaxation, the diastole. The relaxation of the heart is where the blood comes in to the atria. 
AV valve opens as you can see in the diagram and the blood fills up the much larger ventricles. The next stage is the contraction of the heart, the stole. The AV valves are now shut and those ventricles filled with blood. Contraction forces the semilunar valves open and pushes blood out of the heart. This can be shown by blood pressure graphs. Notice the uh, units there, millimeters of mercury is the quite old fashioned unit but still used for pressure. So we focus on the blue line there, the, the pressure in the ventricles, the uh, contraction produces a big change in pressure from 0 to 120 millimeters of mercury. Down to 0 for the relaxation, the, uh, the diastole. So, emphasizing the very high pressure forcing that blood out of the heart. <coughs> so, an animation showing the, uh, the same uh, information there with the contraction of the ventricles producing that big change in pressure. So, that's the most significant part of the, the graph just to show you the aortic pressure not as significant and the pressure in the uh, atria again not significant as all well. so the um, contraction the systole of the uh, ventricles produces the uh, biggest pressure change a little bit more detail on this diagram just showing the opening and shutting of the uh, the valve so the AV valve closes and the heart contracts forcing blood through the semilunar valves which are consequently opened people talk about blood pressure it isn't the uh, the ventricular pressure it is the uh, blood pressure in the arteries They're making the point there that the uh, blood pressure does decrease as you go away from the heart, more space for blood to flow. Useful diagram showing the um, healthy blood pressure values. But notice it is the, uh, the pressure against the arterial walls. Millimeters of mercury, two numbers. You come across 120 over 80 for an 18 year old adult. The top number is the contraction, the systolic pressure on the arteries, and the bottom number is the diastolic pressure on the arteries when the heart relaxes. That measurement taken in the upper arms arteries. So that's all the detail we need.